Deciding whether to do a Roth conversion and when and exactly how much and how should you pay the taxes is, in my view, one of the most challenging decisions we have to make as we near and even enter retirement. In today's video, we're going to look at a tool from New Retirement that I think can help us make that decision. Hey everybody, my name is Rob Berger. This is the Financial Freedom Show. We talk about investing, retirement, and financial freedom. If those topics are important to you, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. I also send out a newsletter every Sunday morning. You can sign up for that with the link below this video. So I wanna go through today a tool uh, that New Retirement offers. New Retirement is sort of financial planning software that it's available uh, for regular folks like you and me. A lot of the financial tools for retirement planning and, and just general financial planning are made specifically for advisors. New Retirement is probably one of the most feature-rich tools that's available for, for everybody. And they've had some Roth conversion tools in the past, but this year they've made some significant updates uh, to the, the Roth conversion explorer tool. And I wanna walk through some of that with you today. I think it helps uh, not only to make the decisions on Roth conversions, but it also helps us to understand uh, many of the factors that can go into when we should do a Roth conversion and you know the specifics. So let's dive right in. So what I'm showing you is sort of a demo version of new retirement, the data I've just made up. Uh, and uh, before we get to the Roth conversions, we've got to understand the data just a bit. So what I want to show you first are the accounts I've set up. And you can see them here. It's for a couple. Uh, they're, they're age 60 and 58. Uh, they've got right now all traditional uh, retirement accounts, about a million bucks, roughly. And then I've put a half a million dollars into a taxable account, and you'll understand why I did that in a minute. Now, one thing that's important is the rate of return. In, in new retirement, you set a range, optimistic and pessimistic, and you can set that by account. Now, in this case, you can see that every single account, I'll just hover over it, has the same range. 2% pessimistic rate of return, 8% uh, optimistic. And we'll talk a bit about that, but that's that's really important. If we think about that just conceptually, the rate of return that you're gonna get on a traditional IRA or 401k uh, is important uh, in doing, doing Roth conversion analysis because that return will tell you how, how, how big your balance is once you get to required minimum distributions, which will of course in turn be a big factor in how much you're required to take out each year. And you may be saying, well, wait a minute, Rob, but how do I how do I figure out what the returns are gonna be over the next 10, 20, 30 years? Yeah, we gotta guess, we gotta make assumptions and we'll do that in this tool as well. That's just one of the many assumptions we have to make with Roth conversions, but I wanted to point that out. Uh, the second thing I wanna show you, just so you understand how I've set this up, because uh, this is really important, is uh, I've got, so one spouse is age 60, uh, they're gonna retire at 65, uh, so they've got a few more years left to work. Another spouse is 58 and already retired. So that's sort of the age group we've got. Obviously, if you're using new retirement, you'll put in your specifics. And then the other assumption, and this is really important, are taxes. So with, with new retirement, you have two choices. You can use the current tax rates, and it'll, it'll just assume that those rates stay uh, in effect you know, forever as, as part of your plan. Or... Uh, you can you can set it up so that it changes in 2025 it changes uh to, or maybe 2026 but it changes to the 2017 tax rates and the reason for that is the the current tax law they're, they're they're supposed to they're scheduled to go back to what they were now that raises a big question well will congress you know and and the president then do something about that will they change it of course, that raises an even bigger question. What will happen to tax rates going forward? Again, just another assumption that we have to make. We'll look at both of these uh, a, a bit today, but I'm gonna stick with the one that changes them back in 2025, because that's just the current law. And um, But obviously you can use, use it and change both of these. It will affect your Roth conversion analysis. Now, before we get to the tool, one, one last thing. New Retirement has had this Roth conversion tool that you see here under, under money flows. And what this allows you to do is sort of by hand set up Roth conversions sort of one by one, right? Which account do you want to take it from? Okay, how much? 
uh, what age are you going to do the conversion? And so you could you could set up multiple Roth conversions this way, and it's still a, a great tool to use. But the one that I want to show you today is down in the Explorer section down here that kind of, I'll say, automates the process a bit more. So let's take a look at it now. And when you get to it, you'll see that you, you can kind of solve for three different, I'll say, Roth conversion objectives. The first is, I want the highest estate value I can get. In other words, when I'm dead, I, I want the, the biggest chunk of money, I guess, to leave to your family and, 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 to, and to charities, perhaps. So that's one option. The second option is, no, I want to convert up to a certain tax bracket. So just do that automatically for me. And then let me look at the results. That's actually the one we're going to focus on the most uh, today. Uh, and then the third one, this actually was just released. What's the lowest lifetime tax liability that I'll have? And of course, you can experiment with all of these. As I mentioned, we're going to focus on this one, the tax bracket. Now, one thing about the other two, you, you've got to be a little careful because, as we'll see here, there will be end-of-life uh, uh, account balances. And in some scenarios, you'll end up with less money projected because of the Roth conversions, which seems odd. But keep in mind that once you convert to Roth, there's no embedded tax liabilities. If you're going to, for example, uh, if your children were going to inherit your money, if you've done Roth conversions, it's true they might in absolute dollars inherit less, but those Roth dollars won't cost them any money in the form of taxes. So you've got to sort of keep that in mind. For me, I think the best way is to try to solve for a tax bracket. And, th so, and that's what this looks like. And that raises the question, well, wait a minute, which tax bracket do I pick? To answer that, I'm going to just show you one other screen before we go back to the Roth conversion. At least this is how I answer it. I go into Insights and I go down to Taxes. And uh, this shows you estimated taxes by year for this hypothetical couple. And this is very common. You see this big hole right here. They're not paying hardly any tax, zero, zero taxes for a number of years. Why is that? Well, in this scenario, the one spouse that's still working uh, retires. And it's maybe before uh, they're getting Social Security or before they're getting much Social Security, depending on, on their claiming strategy. And required minimum distributions haven't kicked in. This is prime, I'll call it prime real estate for Roth conversions because, you know, you can fill up the lower tax brackets uh, with conversions here. And that's effectively what we're going to do. But, but again, the question is, well, what bracket do we go to? Of course, you could experiment with all of them. But what I like to do is come to here, net taxable income by federal tax bracket. And I, I want to look at where are we here? And you can see, you'll see it over here change. You'll see this change over here as I scroll through year after year. So we're in the 12% tax bracket. Uh, now, I want to show you something here. When we go to 2026, notice what happens. In 2025, we're in the 10 and 12% tax brackets. When we go to 26, we're in the 10 and 15 it's like, wait a minute, how did, how did we skip over the 12% tax bracket? Well, I actually reached out to New Retirement with that question. I thought maybe it was a capital gains tax thing. Turns out, uh, this is because I've selected, remember I selected the, the, the tax assumptions that, that in 2025, I guess going into 2026, they're going to revert back to what they were in 2017 and there was no 12% tax bracket. <laughs> so that's why you see zero there, just in case you experienced that. So, but in any event, we're around the 15% tax bracket. And then of course, no taxes here. And then, you know, we get up here and we're in the 25 so I'm going to want to experiment with maybe the 25, the 15 to 25 percent tax brackets. And again, because we're dealing with two different tax scenarios, the brackets now and what they'll be in, in 2026, the Roth Explorer may not have those exact brackets, but we'll get close enough. Now, before we go back to the, the, the Roth Conversion Explorer, there's one thing I want to show you here. You'll notice that our, our money is creeping up. There's inflation, we're getting returns, but also our RMDs are getting higher. And you'll notice we're already in the 28% tax bracket, right? 28. And then when we get to the last year of the plan, we bump up into the 33% tax bracket. What happened? Well, the answer is one of the spouses died, right? Because one was older than the other. And I had them set to, to both, uh, you know, the plan to end when they were 95 years old. And as a single tax filer, your brackets are different. And, and I point that out because... It's just another unknown that can affect Roth conversions. Because if you're, 
if you're one filing status now and sometime during say retirement that filing status changes you're single you get married you're married and a spouse dies or you get divorced that can can and will affect your tax brackets which in turn can affect whether a Roth conversion makes the most sense the thing I want to highlight there is there's just a lot of assumptions and you have to work through these on your own now you can use new retirement it sounds a little morbid but you can set a spouse to, to you know to, to the the plan to end for a spouse at any age you want and just run through experiments the key to understand is this there is no Roth conversion tool that can answer all these questions for us they can do the math for us as we'll see with new retirement but we have to understand how these different life events can affect our taxes and therefore the Roth conversions the tools can't make those assumptions for us they can just you know crunch the numbers when we make those assumptions in the tool so I want to point that out really important okay so with that let's go back down to the the Roth convert whoops the Roth that's not what I wanted I wanted this one we're going we're gonna to solve for tax brackets now you'll notice again they don't have a 15 and 25 they, they've got the current tax brackets um, and in fact there's a note down here that I'm currently modeling the 2025 changes but that's fine let's go to the 12 percent bracket now here you get a choice do you want the algorithm to in some cases suggest a Roth conversion where you pay the taxes on it from the retirement account so effectively you're withdrawing more from a retirement account paying taxes on those withdrawals and then using that money to pay for the Roth conversion or do you say no no I only want to pay for for the conversions out of taxable accounts this is the one that I tend to go with this is how I would want to do a Roth conversion the, the one thing I'll say about the difference is, is this you may have heard that the longer your money stays in a Roth say after the conversion the better right well turns out that's only half true here's the deal if you pay the taxes on a Roth conversion from your taxable account in other words not from the retirement account then it, it's true the longer your money stays in that Roth account uh, the the better it is for you it, it basically when you're comparing the tax rates when you converted with the tax rates and, and your effective tax had you not converted and taken money out of a traditional account the longer you keep it in the Roth the better if you pay the the tax on the conversion out of the retirement account itself time in a Roth doesn't matter it, it's either going to be a good deal to do the conversion or not based on the tax you paid when you did the conversion versus the tax you would have paid had you not converted and taken the money out hope that makes sense but in any event I always pick this option and then this is I think a neat feature it says okay you want to pay the taxes on the conversion out of your taxable account fine can we drain your taxable account down to zero or you know would you like to leave some money in the taxable account well I always want to leave something in there of course you'll put in here whatever makes sense for you I'm just going to throw in 25,000 and we get the conversion plan now it shows us a couple of things right up top it's suggesting 12 conversions uh, it says at the end of life effectively the estate value will be less by about 160,000 remember I, one of the things I wish the tool did was explain this calculation it doesn't at least at the moment the thing to keep in mind and, and, and why I find this number not all that helpful is it what really matters is sort of the after tax so you know if I don't do a conversion yeah I might have hundred and sixty one thousand dollars more say for my uh, for inheritance or for, for charity or whatever uh, but it, it's going to be subject to, to tax particularly if I if I if say my children inherit it for example and so this number in and of itself I don't think is all that uh, meaningful in my view and by the way it raises yet another thing to consider who's going to inherit the money if it's a charity they're not going to pay taxes so that's something to keep in mind when you're thinking through Roth conversions of course if it's your children uh, they will pay taxes and there it depends on what's their tax bracket that might be something you need to consider when you're 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 figuring out your Roth conversion strategy okay so it shows us our taxes saved fine and you can see it it pretty much does most of those Roth conversions during that time we looked at a few minutes ago where we we weren't otherwise paying any taxes and it sort of filled up uh, uh, that hole 
uh, up to again, and we, I think we did we we set it for the the what you can see over here the twelve percent tax bracket, and um, so these are the conversions, and you can see a lot of data. You can look here and you can look at it by account and by year. You can also look at projected account balances. So if we come all the way to the end of life, we've still got some pre-tax, but we got a lot in Roths, as would make sense because of the conversions. Um, we can look at the uh, value at the end of, uh, of the plan. We can look at the federal income tax rates. Of course, they went up during this, uh, this you know, I call it, again, the prime real estate when to do conversions. But then you can see here, RMDs w w were lower. And so our effective tax rate was lower. And here's the actual tax liability. A lot of data to look at. Uh, this is a great feature. Irma, it shows you how this will affect your, 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 your Medicare premiums. And you can see here that the current plan, you were gonna be paying some, some Irma and with the optimized plan, you're not. Again, I would love for it to explain why. My assumption here is because of the lower RMDs. Um, but again, that's, that's an assumption. That's the only thing I could think of. But it does show you the numbers, which I think is useful, and then summarizes them here. And then, of course, it shows you the, the changes in your required minimum distributions by uh, year. And for these, for many of these, you can then do a, a look at it in the form of a table. So I, I, I got to tell you, I really like this tool. I think it's terrific. It doesn't answer all our questions, uh, but I think it, 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 it can serve as a good starting place. Now, Let's edit this and just look at what would happen if we went if we bumped up to the 22 tax uh, bracket. Not a lot of changes, which is kind of interesting to me. In fact, so interesting that I want to back out of it altogether. Go back in tax brackets. Let's just make sure because I would expect that to have changed more, but maybe it doesn't. Nope. So pretty much the same thing now. Uh, Again, you could go through all of the numbers. What I would do in using this is I would make a lot of changes to a lot of assumptions. So for example, I would look at this and then I would come back and I would say, all right, let's change our tax assumption to use current rates and then go back to the, the Roth Explorer, go to the tax brackets. We'll put in this. This I'm going to keep the same. Yeah, it did, it did make some changes, which you would expect. Taxes would be lower in this scenario, uh, but still more or less the same general strategy, filling up conversions during that period after work, but before uh, most of Social Security and certainly before RMDs start to kick in. And then you can see the rest of the data. The last thing I want to mention that's really important, uh, and I alluded to it earlier, is our assumptions on... Um, returns. In this setup, I've used the same, actually there are going to be two things. I've, I've used the same assumption on rate of return. If you have, let's imagine you have uh, for your, your taxable account, something very different. I'm just going to get crazy here. 25%. Oh, it must be less than 15 or equal to. Okay. I guess 15 is the highest we can go. That can actually affect the results of the Roth conversion tool. Why? Because in, in, in analyzing the conversions, it's saying, well, wait a minute, you want to take money out of this account to pay the taxes, but look, you're earning 15%. Man, that's great. And you want to, you want to spend that money at that rate to put more money in, say, a Roth um, that's, that's earning 8%, for example. That they may not make sense. And so it can affect if we go back to the Roth conversion, I don't know if we'll see it in this particular scenario. We can find out. But you just have to understand that. And by the way, before I show you that, I'm going to link to this page, which is from New Retirement with a lot of their FAQs. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, I, that it does. Now, <laughs> You can see the, the 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 effect. By the way, if you're looking at that, and you're saying, "Wait a minute, Rob, 15 million." That, that, I mean, I get there might be a difference, but obviously something's broken. No, what you're seeing is the massive effects of a 15 percent rate of return on a half a million dollars over 30 or 40 years, and that's why that number is so big. But but it still shows the point. Your your growth rates can affect the results, although it doesn't look to me like it's affected the actual conversions here, at least just from from eyeballing it. So let me, um, before I show you the last thing, let me go back 
uh, to the accounts. Here we go. I want to um, change this one back to something more realistic, at least what I think is more realistic. And then uh, this also has to do with uh, rates of return because so far we've been assuming, and you can see it here, up here, optimistic. And that, what that means is the 8% on each account, right? But we're also assuming that also encapsulates our assumptions about inflation, which I think I had two to 4%. So it's gonna assume the optimistic inflation rate, which would be the lower of the, of the, of the range. Well, I can pick the average. So if I pick the average between two and eight, that's gonna be 5%. And it does change the results, as you can see, and the outcome. And if you then go to, uh, to pessimistic, it's gonna change it even further. And uh, I think that is just another way in which this tool is very helpful. It, at one level, it can be frustrating because you're like, Rob, there's all these assumptions and I don't know, I don't know what to assume. And I get that but it also shows you how these assumptions affect the results. And at the end of the day, we just have to use our, our, our best estimate of everything from taxes to our filings, uh, tax filing status to, by the way, we haven't even talked about where you're gonna live and the impact on state income tax and how that might affect the analysis, which by the way, this will factor in as well. So uh, yeah, yeah, there are a lot of assumptions. There's nothing that a financial tool can do about that. That's just the nature of our tax code. Uh, but I think the new retirement tool can help you understand how those different assumptions will affect the results and allow you to run through as many scenarios as you want to see the results. The thing I would say at the end of the day, after you've spent some time with the tool, I would view the results that you have as sort of the beginning of the analysis. I wouldn't blindly accept what the tool uh, tells you. I would think through what makes the most sense for you. The one thing I'll say that I'm hoping they do add at some point they don't have yet is once you find the scenario that you think is the most realistic for your situation, it would be great if you could just click a button and have those Roth conversions automatically incorporated into your plan with new retirement. You can't do that. You can see what they are, then you can manually enter them, but, but that's what you'll have to do uh, once you find the, the Roth conversion plan that's best for you. Well, there you go. Overall, I really like the tool. I do think there are some things that could be improved, uh, but I do think it's probably one of the best Roth conversion calculators tools that I've come across, and uh, hopefully it's helpful to you as well. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'd be happy to help you out any way I can. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.